So you've had a long day and all you want to do is just go home, relax, and watch some TV. You take off your shoes, you sit down on the couch, and instead of thinking to turn on your cable box, you immediately decide to start streaming your favorite show you've been binge watching for the past three weeks. It's pretty great how it is now for most people. No longer do you have to run to the store to buy the box set or wait for a service to send you a DVD in the mail. You definitely don't have to download the entire episode onto your hard drive either before you can start watching it. Since monthly subscription services like these are so prevalent with video, how far off are we from the same thing becoming the norm with video games? Hey, it's Jake from GameRanks, and today we're diving into the question, is the gaming world really ready for an all streaming future? When it comes to video, physical discs have been relics of the past in favor of streaming services like Netflix and Hulu. Also, rest in peace, Blockbuster. I'm so sorry I miss you. <laughs> but still, uh, when we want to play a new game, most of us either purchase it on our system store, uh, look for it on an online retailer, or actually go to a physical store. You've probably already heard about PlayStation Now, Sony's answer to the ever-growing desire for the, and I quote, Netflix of video games. This service gives users immediate streaming access to hundreds of PlayStation titles for like 20 bucks a month. Although you can instantly play as Nathan Drake from the original Uncharted games, critics say that the sacrifice in quality and increase in connectivity issues since the game isn't being directly downloaded leaves a lot to be desired. On the other side of the constant battle between major companies, Microsoft's dueling answer, as I'm sure you all know, comes in the form of their own service, Xbox Game Pass right now. Microsoft tries to correct quality and latency issues by only allowing their users to download the game instead of streaming it. In a 2017 interview with IGN, Microsoft's Phil Spencer said that Game Pass would mean, and I quote, continuous, full fidelity gameplay without having to worry about streaming, bandwidth, or connectivity issues. But still, how could this be the next Netflix if it takes hours to begin with because you have to download, you know? Well, in an interview with The Verge in early 2018, Microsoft's head of their new cloud division, Kareem Chaudhry, said, We believe there is going to be two billion gamers in the world, and our goal is to reach every single one of them. So yeah, this might be a start in the right direction. It also helps that not only with Game Pass, but Microsoft is kind of just building up that whole platform, also announcing that there will be Microsoft streaming technology. Their xCloud gaming streaming service is apparently going to be a thing with phones and consoles and PCs. And not only will you be able to stream to any device, but it will be a big component of the next generation console Microsoft has announced they're working on, codenamed Scarlet, as well as the rumored set desktop box that's going to be designed just for streaming this Scarlet game service. The question is, is it going to be a direct competitor to something like PS Now, or is it going to try new innovations to really evolve the latency and the technology behind this stuff? The rumors do suggest that Microsoft's technology in the new Scarlet stuff is going to be specifically focused around improving the experience and reducing latency, but who knows, that's still probably at least two years away. Okay, so maybe a subscription streaming service for video games is a little further away than we think. Uh, maybe we'll always have to deal either with laggy gunfights and blurry images, or 17-hour downloads if we want the true unadulterated convenience. Or do we? This might be obvious to some, but cloud gaming facilitates game streaming by storing, executing, and rendering the video game on the subscription services cloud servers, allowing the player to simply stream these results over the internet. So say goodbye to the need of having a top of the line graphics card or CPU. Credit where credit is due, in terms of the major consoles, PlayStation Now is the closest thing they have to it. And all of this does sound great, you know, a simple and easy user-friendly way to play your favorite video games at the utmost of ease, where anyone can get in on the suite and seemingly endless treasure chest of video games. Now, as of right now, it seems as if companies like Nvidia have come the farthest with GeForce Now. This is a streaming service that uses their Shield TV hardware to stream games in 1080p with low latency directly onto your flat screen and cross-platform. Trap killing a default for a victory royale in Fortnite entirely over the cloud is no longer a dream, it's kind of becoming a reality. But still, the major question with all these amazing technological advancements is one of accessibility. As you might already know, since connecting to the cloud requires, you know, an internet connection, how do areas with poorer internet infrastructure fare in the battle of consumer convenience? Consider these facts. The United States has an average internet speed of 18.7 megabits per second. This is over two times the average global internet speed of just 7.2 megabits per second, according to a 2017 report done by Akamai, a worldwide cloud service provider. That's just the average, and there are households with better and sometimes even worse connections. Not to mention the encroaching rise of bandwidth caps that many people are already dealing 
dealing with from their internet service providers. But take this for instance, Netflix recommends to their customers that to achieve ultra high definition video streaming for their similar cloud service, a 25 megabit per second download speed is standard. And that's just for video. There has to be even more coordination when the goal is to stream the entirety of a video game. So maybe we're further away from an all streaming gaming future than a lot of us hope we would be. I, I'm not totally sure, especially considering these companies are ramping up so quickly, but it's not always about how quickly the companies ramp up. It's also about how much it's embraced by the consumers. And at least for a few years, I expect it to still be more of a niche thing. At least maybe until casual gamers get on board with it, because I feel like someone who's more casual about games and doesn't care about all the hardcore aspects isn't going to notice or care about much latency when they're playing their casual games. So who knows if it's going to change for us more serious players of games? I don't know. But still, it's all just food for thought. It's something to think about. And we want to know what you guys are thinking down in the comments. Have you streamed games over PS Now? Or have you thought about Xbox's new streaming platform? Or maybe just downloaded stuff through Game Pass? Maybe you've played it at a convention or maybe you've gotten into the testing phases of GeForce Now. Any perspective on streaming video games, we want to hear from you guys down in the comments. Let us know how you're feeling on any of this if you do have the internet to handle it in the future or not. We just want to know, get some perspective, and just see where things are going. If you enjoyed this video and maybe learned a thing or two though, clicking the like button does help us out. And you should consider subscribing as well because we put out stuff like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.